certainly uh, would, would be very happy to help people with that format. But as noted, uh, there are several other formats which can be much more uh, flat, um, denormalized lists of names and accepted species and accepted names. Did that answer your question well? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> ah. Please. <laughs> Diana, we can see you and we can see the presentation. Okay. Now can you hear me? Are you listening to me? Can you hear me? We can hear you're breaking up a little bit. Maybe we should just try and see how we get on. Okay. Good luck. Good luck, Diana. Thank you. <laughs> okay. If you can go to the previous one. Hey, hello. I am Diana Fernandez, and uh, I am a global catalog editor in the cold checklist extended release. And this person in this presentation, I would try to explain. Uh, how is going the work? Uh, what is the work behind creating a more comprehensive checklist? The next one, please. Well, we just saw a complete explanation of the code checklist. Uh, can you? Ch yes. Okay. So I won't stop on that, but uh, what is important to have in mind here is that the biggest and the more comprehensive list, lists of species are the cold checklists from one side and the GBF backbone taxonomy on the other. However, there is a big difference in the content in the in their content, mainly because they address different need, needs and therefore they are the result of different methods to create them. So besides their content that we can see here uh, that the GBF backbone has more than 2.5 mil more names than the cold checklist. The cold checklist is a complete authoritative list. And it's, it, it has a well curated classification as Olaf just presented us. It is also a robust and reliable source that covers needs uh, of researchers, policymakers, and the general public. In contrast, the GBF backbone has a larger list of names, that, as we can see, and it's organized in a synthetic classification that is useful mainly for management, practical management. However, even though it is based on the cold checklist, it also includes names from that are continually added only by algorithms. Its main objective is to address the needs of covering all names in the GBIF occurrences. Um, the next one, please. Well, regarding the, regardless those, yes, anyway, those differences, it is also important to have in mind that both of these lists have important gaps to cover. They still have important gaps to cover, synonyms and name usages, for example, or recently and continually describe, describe species that are, it's, it's in, almost impossible to include them as, as, fa as fast as they are published. Also fossil taxa are not included in, in, at all or, or, or in some parts in, in these lists. And operational taxonomic units uh, are just beginning to include, to be included in the, in the GBIF backbone, but not in the cold checklist. And also we are dealing with uh, even complete taxonomic uh, gaps. Uh, so that's why we are going, uh, or we are looking for a more complete uh, list. The next please. Even though the number of names that uh, the GBIF backbone has, and even though that this is the largest list, it still have important issues to solve, as we can see, uh, as we can see here, where we have an example of though some of these uh, issues that we can find in this in this list, for example, duplicates and error or warning issues 
that are uh, in, in a different layers of information of the, of the GBIF backbone. Next, please. So the desire now is to have a more stable and include all-inclusive taxonomy classification that can be broadly and easily shared and that represents a reliable management classification that might be continually updated by a tripartite process, which considers the work of expert taxonomists from, a, from one part, the input of the informatic tools like text mining, merging and grouping names that comes from different sources, and incorporating also uh, editorial decision-making based on taxonomic criteria. Uh, we also have, have planned to keep the call identifiers, the, which are persistent identifiers, and then to create new persistent identifiers for the additional names that are being included. So that's why we are building a new checklist product. The next one, please. Here is a general diagram of the workflow for the extended release. So in the first time, in the first part, we can see it in the in the green part where we have the the process that Olaf described in, uh, the, deeper in the previous presentation, where the current, well, the workflow that, that, that creates the current uh, release uh, that, that creates the call checklist that is available in, in its website and that consider only global checklists. But once we're having this rele release, we start to, we're starting to get information from regional more local or national and management checklists that have not been included before in the in the call checklist and we are trying to well to get this information into the checklist bank workbench where we have a, a working project and where we the the tool on the yes performs different different steps of the of this process merging sectors doing the homotopy grouping and including these auditorial decisions and then making different performance tests until we get an extended release that might be reliable. So planning in, in having in mind to have this extended release as the only source for the GB backbone. Currently, the catalog of life is the main source of this backbone taxonomy, but uh, further on, the main, the only source is, will be the extended release. The next one, please. So we do have a preliminary version of this extended release that is has been the, the result of this some of these trials, and these are the metrics we have uh, currently now. 5.5 million names that comes from more than 500 sources. And in this graph, in, in the bar graph, we can see that the green bars are showing the content of the call checklist. And in the purple part of the, of the graph, the names, uh, it, it shows the names that are already added. Uh, we have just considered eight publishers that provide more than 450 data sets. And this here I list some examples. And this is mm, a, a graph, another graph of the names that are included in these uh, taxonomic ranks. So it is still to need, it, it needs to be improved all, all obviously, but we have, we have this, this result right now. Next, please. Uh, before getting this extended release that I just mentioned, we have to, to have in mind some, some criteria to select additional sources uh, that might come in and that might include more, more names into the work into the working projects. All data sets must be available in the checklist bank and 
also on another of the criteria is that these data sets must be in a CC BY or a CC0 license. And also having high content of genus and species, we are only adding information from family level and down, not, uh, not above family. So it's important to have a high number of genus and species. And we also consider that these sources are recently updated, or if not, they are including taxonomic groups that are missing at all in the cold checklist or part of a very important part of this, for example, families, entire families that are not present or represented in the catalog of life, in the cold checklist. We also made a general overview of the error issues that are detected in the, in the checklist bank workbench uh, on each data set. So we are dealing with more than 48,000 data sets and more than 239 millions of name usages in this data set. So this is still a lot of work to analyze and to have a, a good income in the extended release. Next, please. Next, please. Okay, so this is an example of the uh, additional sources that we have considered. We have uh, grouped this in three important groups, this global and semi-global, and here I, I show some examples of this list that are considered. Also are the taxonomist and management, taxonomic and management lists uh, which, that have been included and the regional and checklist and national checklist. Next, please. Next, please. So we have been changing these this sources in each in each tests. And also another important part of this of this part is the selection of the of the sectors, the merged sector. So we first have to select the sectors, define the priorities which goes first and the other. And uh, this merging is based on the uh, name usage matching matching. And we're trying to avoid duplication of names. Also, complementary information is added once a name is, is included in the checklist. It, it is also how many aware. And as I mentioned before, the identifiers are conserved and new identifiers are created. Next, please. Well, this is an example of the issues with, that we have already found. Some of them are solved. For example, when we have a one year difference on the authority, it is already solved. But others where we have more than one year in difference in the authority is not, it is not really working right now. And also from where we have the same species, but with different authority, it is hard to decide where the, the what is the, which one is the the correct one, or if they are both accepted. In this case, for example, we have detected that is a misuse or a misinterpretation in the second name of the authority. Next, please. Another important issue is the uh, unplaced name. This is, is, it, this is work in progress because, well, this is due mainly because one, one of the problem is that the original source does not have the higher classification complete or at all. It doesn't include, for example, in the first example and in the, in the right corner. And in other cases, we do have info or the original info, uh, source has this higher classification, but as the information is only included from family and below, this does not can be located correctly in the in the checklist. So we still have to do uh, work in this. Next, please. But good advances have been having a shift. So the homotopic grouping works, uh, it tries to detect the bosonym, the relations based on the terminal epithet, stem, and authorship. 
uh, names that are within the same family. It consolidates multiple accepted names and synonymizes all the names, but one, uh, it just keep one accepted name. And this tool can be used in any group, in any taxon from family and below. So examples, there, it, it works differently based on, on the, the nomenclature rules. So example, we have example, different examples in botany. Here I can we can see the example in botany. And then in the next slide, please, is the example in the zoology data. So this is also work in progress uh, in order to have proper results and good interpretation of, of this uh, once the merge is done. Next, please. So another thing to do that is uh, in progress is the auditorial. We, need, we still need to improve auditorial decisions. This is based on quality issues and weighting. So we have to consider the issues that are, uh, are detected in the checklist bank for each data source and uh, do a, a, a proper weighting of these errors in order to include mostly or, or with a preference those data sets that have the less number of errors or issues in, the, in, in its content. Next, please. So we still have uh, work to do. We still are a juvenile in, in this part. So, but the call standard release is on production right now. We are doing different testing and improving uh, some issues that I already presented. Um, and the, well, the main objective is to replace the GB backbone with this extended release that has uh, more curated information uh, besides the algorithm information. Uh, as I mentioned before, improve the selection of sources based on weighting the issues or the data sets. Continue this performance testing and until we get a satisfactory version of this extended release. And another high, uh, very important point is to promote mobilization of more checklists, uh, especially at the national level and regional level. So it involve more local commu uh, taxonomic communities to get or to publish information and to include it into the extended release. And I, that's thing. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Deanna. Uh, th there was a great deal in that presentation and we've uh, sadly got no time to, uh, to spend on questions right now. But um, I would highlight that uh, what we're talking about here is a platform through Checklist Bank, not only for publishing a very wide range of checklist sources, but also for reusing them in many different contexts. And the construction tools that you've seen slides for, for the construction of Catalog of Life checklist, uh, they're ones which are also applicable for others who are trying to put together checklists from multiple sources. So we're always interested in conversations on that front. Uh, thanks, Deanna. Um, we need to switch over as quickly as possible to the next presentation from Thomas Orel, um, who will be talking about ITIS uh, and its data quality.